Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, October 23rd, 2020. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoy this episode. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts, and you can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I am currently hosting a make along over on Instagram for the year 2020. It is the Make 9 2020 Mal, and that is for you to join in on the Make 9 Challenge where you choose nine projects that you would like to complete this year. Post a grid of those projects on Instagram with the hashtag Make 9 2020 Mal, and that will enter you to win uh, prizes that I am drawing periodically throughout the year, as well as any time that you are working on one of those projects or finish one of those projects, you can also post on Instagram, including that hashtag, and that will also include you in the entry to win a prize. So this make along is completely just participatory. You are not required to finish anything. It's just for the fun of trying to put together nine projects that you would like to complete this year. As I've said, you are not too late to continue to continue to join in on this make along. I know that there are probably nine projects that many of you would like to make before the end of the year. Whips are allowed for this make along. So even if you have nine whips that are currently in the works that you would like to finish up this year, that is perfectly fine. Just go ahead and make a board showing those projects that you would like to finish up this year. And again, you don't have to finish anything. So there's no pressure. It's just completely for fun. And also any craft is included as well. So it doesn't only have to be knitting or crochet. It can be any project. In fact, I just saw recently that somebody had posted a grid, including a recipe that they wanted to make as a, like a candy recipe that someone wanted to make as a gift for someone. So that is awesome. I think that's so fun to include even baking or cooking as well. So anyway, I would love to see any of the new boards that you all would like to put together. And of course, as always, I love seeing the progress that you all have been making on the projects that you have on your boards throughout this year. So please continue to join in on that make along. I today am wearing the Vila sweater, which I knit earlier this year as a test knit for Elizabeth of Pearls and Peonies. I do not believe that she has yet released this pattern. Um, but she just recently had a little baby boy, and so her hands are definitely full. If you would like to know a little bit more information about this sweater, though, you can check out my episode 94 where I chatted all about it. That is the episode where it was a finished object, so I gave a lot more details on this project in that episode if you would like to check that out, and I will link to that in the description box below as well. I absolutely love wearing this sweater though, and I've really enjoyed wearing it since the weather has cooled off here. I have a few finished objects to share with you all that I'm so excited about. The first finished object I have is these beautiful silver hoof mittens that I was able to finish, and I'm so pleased with them. Here they are. This is a beautiful design by Culabra Designs. And these are the eighth project that I have been able to finish from my Make Nine gift list. So I made two Make Nine boards, the first of which was a personal Make Nine list where I wanted to make nine projects for myself, and then another gift list Make Nine board so nine projects that I wanted to make as gifts. I've done a lot better on my gift list than I have on my own personal projects, which is typical for me because I just really enjoy making gift knits. I mean, I have made, I've made five projects from my personal make nine list, but I don't have high hopes of being able to finish that list this year, but that's okay. Uh, but I am hopeful that I'll be able to finish my gift list. So as I said, this is the eighth project from the gift list and I'm so pleased with how these turned out. I think that this design is absolutely stunning and I'm just so, so happy with these. I used Knit Picks Palette Yarn. The cream colored uh, yarn is called Cream and the light tan is called Wheat Heather. 
um, palette is a fingering weight 100% Peruvian Highland wool yarn and it works wonderfully for color work. I have used it for color work mittens before and I've been so happy with it. So last time I recorded an episode, I had this right mitten done and I had just started on the left mitten. I was just past the cuff and yeah, I just really, really enjoyed working on these. I think that pattern is so beautiful and was so enjoyable to work up the pattern and see that deer form and all of the beautiful details of this pattern were so much fun to work on. I used for the cuff a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle and then switched to a US 3 3.25 millimeter needle for the remainder of the mitten. They were knit from the bottom up and then you go back and add in the thumb. And I'm really, I love these so much. So pleased with them. So I, I made them intentionally very neutral so that they would make a nice gift for anyone. So I don't actually have anyone specific in mind that I'm planning to gift these to. I have a few people in mind, but I haven't decided who I'm going to be giving them to. I have pretty large hands and they fit my hands perfectly. So I'm probably going to gift them to somebody that also has large hands like me because they're just such a nice roomy fit. I love how long they are and they're not tight at all. They're just a wonderfully fitting mitten for my hands. I am just so pleased with how these turned out and so excited to continue to work on my make nine list. So I only have one other pair of mittens on my gift list and that is another pair of color work mittens that I'm planning to gift to my mother-in-law. So I'm hoping to start those really soon. I have another finished object. This was a really quick fix it project. So uh, these are the snowfall socks. This is a beautiful pattern by Tabitha Gandhi and I test knit these for her back in 2017. I think that these were probably one of the very first pairs of socks that I made for myself that really fit really well. And I loved them so much. I loved them a little too much because I ended up working a hole into the sole of the socks, which is very typical for me. That's where I typically use or wear out a hole in my socks first is in the sole of my, or the ball of my foot. So I, I had actually worn, the last time that I wore these before I wore a hole in them, I wore them with some ankle boots that I have. And I was thinking when I was trying them on that it would be really cute if they were ankle, you know, shorty socks so that I could wear them with ankle boots and they wouldn't, they would, you know, look cuter with ankle boots, you know, as shorty socks. I thought that would look cuter. And so since I ended up wearing a hole in the ball of the foot, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and make these into shorties since I need to fix them anyway. So I ripped back from the toe um, up to just past the heel flap. So these were originally knit with a heel flap and gusset. So I ripped right up to the, the, you know, right before the heel flap. And then I just picked up the stitches and knit a toe. I just, I maybe I knit um, about six rows before I started the toe, but not very much. So I finished off the toe just with the extra yarn that I had ripped out. And then I decided to use for the heel, the after, afterthought heel pattern from Kay Jones's umbrella socks pattern. So that is a heel pattern that is included in her umbrella socks pattern. So I hadn't tried that before. I have tried afterthought heels before, but I haven't really had a lot of luck with them. I didn't like the fit of the afterthought heels very much. Um, from I've only done it twice before, I think. But anyway, I didn't. I wasn't really happy with how they fit. But I had heard on Kay Jones, she's of the Bakery Bears. She had spoken about how this heel specifically works really well for those that have a high instep, which I do. And so I thought I'd give it a try. And I am really happy with how this turned out. It was a super simple pattern, easy to, um, easy to work up. And I'm really, really happy with the uh, mini that I used for the heels. This was just a mini that I had dyed up myself and I just really love how the colors coordinate with the main color. The main color is very faded from what it originally was. It originally was 
my hand dyed yarn um, in the enriched colorway, which is originally a much oranger color, more of like a burnt orange. Now they look brown to me. Um, but anyway, I still really like them. And they're actually on a um, gold Stellina base as well. But the Stellina is hardly noticeable in real life. So I highly doubt that it'll show up on camera. So anyway, like I said, they have been worn for three years pretty regularly because they were definitely one of my favorite socks. And anyway, so I am not too delicate with my hand knit socks. I wash them in the machine. I don't usually dry them if I can help it. Once in a while, one sneaks into the dryer accidentally, but usually I lay them flat to dry. But still, three years of washing in warm water, you know, not on a delicate cycle. I just throw them in with the rest of my laundry. So anyway, the color has changed quite a bit, but I still am so happy with how these have turned out now as shorties and I'm hopeful that I will get a few more years of wear out of these now that I have fixed them. So super happy with this quick little project that I was able to work on and fix. I do have one other finished object that I would like to share with you all, but I'm going to wait until the end of the episode because it is a gift knit that I want to hold off on so that I can tell the recipient to stop watching. So I'm going to move on to my works in progress. My first work in progress is a new cast on that I am holding in this beautiful bag from Tanny Casey. It is definitely one of my favorites. It's this has this corduroy material and I just love using it in the winter time because it seems so cozy and I really love it. And on here are some enamel pins that I received from the ladies of Nice and Knit. And in here, I have started my husband's sweater. So I am making the Artin sweater by Barocco. And this is going to be a Christmas slash birthday present for my husband. His birthday is on Christmas day. And so I am hopeful that I will be able to finish this for him for Christmas. It's quite a big project. So I'm a little skeptical if I will be able to finish it or not. But anyway, I'm trying, I'm gonna try. I really, I'm kind of hopeful because I have a list of things that I want to make for Christmas gifts and I'm working through that list pretty well. I'm, I'm, kind, I'm pretty happy with my progress so far. So anyway, I did do some swatching for this project. I ended up making three swatches. I can't quite remember which one was which first. I think this was the first one, which I started on the recommended needle size which was a US 8 5 millimeter, and it turned out way too loose. So the gauge that I'm supposed to be getting for this project is 20 stitches to four inches. And I, on the US 8, I got 17 stitches to four inches approximately. So that was way too loose, and I didn't like how thin it was looking anyway. You can see right through it. This was the second one. I went down to a US 7 and it was still too loose. I got a gauge of about 18 and a half stitches to four inches. So then I went down to a US six, four millimeter, and I got 19 stitches to four inches. So it was still too loose. I just decided to start the project using a US five, three point, 3.75 millimeter needles. So I have started the project and here is my progress so far. So it is knit bottom up in pieces and then it is seamed together. So here is the back piece with the ribbing. It is a two by two ribbing for three inches and that I, that I used US 2 2.75 millimeter needles for the ribbing. And then I have just started, I wonder if I'm showing the right side. No, I'm not, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I have just started the patterning. There are tons of cables in this pattern. Here is a picture of it. So you can see all the beautiful cable work throughout the pattern. It's on the front and the back and the sleeves. So it's an all over cable pattern and I have just started that. I am a little bit 
Um, well, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to rip this back a little bit because you can kind of see halfway through the ribbing right here, right here. It's not very noticeable, but there is a line of really loose stitches. So I don't know what happened, but there's just this section that, yeah, I think it's probably more noticeable on the right side, unfortunately. You can kind of see it's right here where the stitches are just loose. Yesterday I did wet block this, hoping that those stitches would even out, but it's better than it was, but it's still quite noticeable. And I think it's just gonna bother me. I've been wanting to just ignore it because it's on the back of the sweater, but I'm just so close to that section that I think since I haven't gotten very far yet, I think I'll be happier if I rip back to before that little line and redo it. So I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna do just because I think it will bother me if I don't fix it. So I don't know why that would have happened, but yeah, it's pretty noticeable. It's so strange. I don't know why that happens, but anyway, I am using Knit Picks Swish Worsted Weight Yarn in the Dusk colorway, which is such a beautiful blue. I really, really love the rich color of this blue. It is 100% fine superwash merino wool. And I had mentioned that I got so much of this yarn, but actually I've already used almost one skein in just this bit. So I only have this little tiny bit left over of one of the skeins. They're 50 grams each and 200, no, 110 yards each. So I probably will need a lot. Hopefully I'll have enough. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I feel like there's something else I wanted to say. Oh, I am making the 50 inch chest size. So it's, you know, a pretty large sweater. So I am hopeful that I will be able to not make any more mistakes and continue working on that so that I can get it done in time for Christmas for him. I'm really, really excited to be working on it though. It, it makes me so happy to be making a sweater for him. So my next work in progress is another new cast on that I'm very excited about. So I watched the recent video that Natalie of Nitty Natty put out regarding a make along that she is hosting in collaboration with an organization called Wooly Wishes. And they are collecting handmade items to donate to Syrian refugees that are living in Turkey. And so I am so excited about that. It makes me so happy to be able to be a part of that make along. And I actually went through my storage and right there behind me is a pile of blankets and shawls and things that I have had in storage for a while that I am planning to donate to that organization. And then I'm also, I've also started knitting a hat to donate. So I am working on the clay quat toque by Tin Can Knits. And I'm just using up a bunch of DK weight scraps that I've had in my stash. And I am so excited. This is been such a fun pattern to work on. This is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits and it's absolutely beautiful and so much fun to work up. As is typical with Tin Can Knits patterns, this comes in many sizes from newborn to an adult large size. I am making the adult medium size and I'm using the recommended needles which are US 4, I think, Yes, US 4 3.5 millimeter needles for the ribbing and then US 6 4 millimeter needles for the body of the hat. The uh, main color that I'm using is um, an alpaca yarn that is from Rolling Wood Alpaca Yarn. The other two yarns that I'm using are just some scraps that I had from my own hand dyed yarn. The contrast is not huge, um, but I really like the way that those colors are working together. Here's the two little minis that I'm using for the contrast, but actually I'm already done using these two. So I've already finished all of the color work for this pattern, and I'm just knitting up until this measures six inches, and then I'll do the decreases for the crown of the hat. But I'm, I really loved working on this, and it's such a fun pattern. It would be I have a few more scraps, so I might make more than just this one. We'll see how I, how I do. <laughs> the donations for this make-along that Nitty Natty is hosting are due 
I think you need to mail them out by November 15th. So in case you are interested in joining in this make along as well, I will link to the video where she describes, talks about the make along in detail. I will link to that video in the description box below. So you can check that out if you're interested in joining in as well. But I'm so excited about this, about this make along. And this hat has been so much fun to work on. I don't often make hats and, but I really enjoy working on them. So it's such a fun, quick, gratifying project to work on. So anyway, I'm really, really happy with how that's looking. I love the Tweety Flex in that main color. I think they're so much fun. So, and I'm so glad to be using up some more of my DK weight scraps. So super excited about that. My next work in progress, actually the, la the last three projects I have to share with you before I show you my last finished object are all blankets. So I love making blankets, especially when it gets cooler out. I like making them all year round, but when it gets cooler out, it's even better. And I usually crochet blankets and all three of these projects are crochet projects. So a couple of episodes ago, I showed you a an afghan that I finished and I still had tons of scraps that I had left over from that project and so I wanted to use them up and I started I showed you last time I had started a neat ripple pattern blanket this pattern is by attic 24 down there at the bottom you can see a beautiful progress keeper that is from Amanda of little bitty delights it's a little pumpkin pie I love it so much and that is marking where I was last time I recorded an episode. So I've been able to make quite a bit of progress on this blanket. It is, I really love how the pattern is looking and it's been so much fun just to randomly, I mean, I kind of laid out the colors that I have so that they would be spaced out nicely because I have a few, like this color right here and the dark charcoal that I'm working on right now, I have several of those skeins of yarn that I want to kind of disperse throughout the blanket evenly. But otherwise, you know, the color striping, the width of the stripes is completely random. I'm just using up the entire skein of yarn that I have on hand. And then, you know, I'm, I'm just making sure I don't change colors mid row. So I'm doing a lot of measuring. It takes about 11 to 13 grams to do one row, depending on the yarn. So I've been measuring the yarn and making sure I have enough to complete another row before I change colors. And I just really love how that is turning out. I'm using an H hook, which is five millimeter, I'm using a clover hook. And yeah, I just really love the colors in this. I don't, this is also gonna be a gift, but I don't know for who. Again, maybe somebody again in our family that I haven't gifted, I'd like to be, and you know, there's a few people in my family that I've never gifted anything to that, or haven't gifted anything to them in a while. And so anyway, I think the colors are neutral enough that anybody would like it, I hope. It's all worsted weight, except for this color right here, which is a bulky weight. And um, it's all 100% acrylic as well. So very easy to care for. And it's getting to the point now where it's, almost, you know, it's long enough to just cover my lap. And that's what I love about crocheted or any kind of blanket that you work on is when it gets long enough to cover you up in the winter. It's so nice to be able to have the project cover you up while you're working on it. I love that part of it. So I really love this. In fact, this is the project that I kind of treat myself to when I, you know, cause it's complete, it's really, really mindless. You do have to kind of keep track of where you're doing increases and decreases for that ripple pattern. But it's very easy to memorize and keep track of where you're at. And if I do make a mistake, it's easy just to go back and fix it really quickly. Um, so anyway, this is the project that I've been treating myself to if I don't wanna concentrate on anything too much or if I just wanna break from my other projects. And obviously I've put a bit of time into that because I have made a bit of progress, but it's kind of my little treat project at the moment. So I really enjoyed that so much. My next two projects are scrappy blankets that I am so excited about. This is my Hexi Scrappy Blanket. And I'll have to stand up to show it to you. Um, and I will in just a second, but I have completed another round around this large hexagon. So 
The way that I make this blanket is I add hexagons all around the perimeter of the hexagon. So I have a huge hexagon right now made up of these little tiny hexagons. I right now have 14 along each edge and it is now to the point where it is wide enough and I am no longer gonna be working in that way by working around the perimeter. I am now going to be squaring it off or making it into a rectangular shape. So I'll be adding hexagons in a little bit different way now to try to square off the edges. So that is super exciting and that means, you know, the end is near, you know, I can kind of see the end of this project. It's still gonna be a long um, term project probably, but I do try to add at least two hexagons to this project every morning. That's the first thing I work on when I wake up in the morning is adding two hexagons to this project. So I have really enjoyed doing that. I do have a YouTube tutorial showing you how I make this blanket. So if you are interested in checking that out, I will link to that in the description box below as well. I have used all fingering white scraps and I use a hook that is a C hook 2.75 millimeter and that is also a clover hook. And I join my hexes as I go and I show that in the tutorial as well how I do that and how I make this pattern. So please check that out if you would be interested. It can be adapted to other weights of yarn of course as crochet you can do that with crochet very easily just by changing the hook size to a more appropriate hook size for the weight of yarn that you're using, which of course you can reference the skein of yarn that you have probably to give you an idea of what hook size would be best for the weight of yarn that you're using, or just try out a sample and see if you like the gauge of, you know, one of the hexes using a different weight of yarn. See if you like how it turns out with a larger hook. So I'll go ahead and stand up so you can see it a little better. Well, the sides are kind of folding in on itself, but this gives you kind of an idea of how it's looking. So actually, I will be choosing two of these, oh, that's hard, two of these straight sides. So this will be the width of it. There you can kind of see. And I'll just be squaring off that bottom edge and the top edge. I don't want it to be a square though. Like I mentioned, I do want it to be more of a rectangular shape. So I'll probably just add a couple of rows along the bottom edge and then a couple of rows along the top edge until it is to the length that I want. This is definitely my favorite scrappy blanket that I'm working on. I absolutely love how vibrant and colorful it is. I am not picky about the yarns that go into this. They're just all fingering weight, but other than that, um, anything goes into this and I just try to pick colors that I think look nice together for each little tiny hexi and then I try to spread out the colors as best as possible so I don't have too many colors that are alike right next to each other but other than that it's very random and I love it <laughs> so I am really really happy with this this is another one that is obviously big enough to cover me while I'm working on it which is so perfect first thing in the morning because I'm usually a little chilly first thing in the morning. And so it's so perfect to cozy up with this blanket while I add a couple more hexes to it every morning. So it's such an enjoyable project. This is one of those projects that I will be really sad about when it is finished because <laughs> it's just been such a joy to work on. And it's another one that once it's finished, I'm gonna be very precious with it because I don't want it to get wrecked. So it's definitely not going to be going out into our family room. I'll probably keep it here in our bedroom <laughs> so that it doesn't get destroyed because like I said, we have five children and they're seven to 12 right now and four of them are boys. And so you can only imagine the amount of <laughs> destruction that they could potentially do to something like that that's handmade. So that will probably be a project that I always hang on to in a precious way. <laughs> I'll treat it very delicately, <laughs> but I will use it for sure. My last work in progress that I want to share with you is my crazy scrappy granny stripe blanket. So whenever I finish a section, well a round on my hexi blanket, any tiny little piece of scrap that I have left over I've been saving. So even if it's only about this long or but not quite long enough to add a round to one of the hexes, I still save it and I have been 
adding it to this project. So I was able to save 18 grams from that last round around the um, hexi scrappy blanket. And I went ahead and added those scraps to this project. So this is a pattern. I followed the YouTube tutorial by Bella Coco. I cast or I chained 300 stitches, I think. Ooh, I have to find that note. Yes, 300 stitches I chained to start this project. These are obviously all fingering weight scraps as well because they're just left over from the Hexi Blanket. I'm using the same hook that I use for the Hexi Blanket, so the C 2.75 millimeter hook. And this is such an easy, mindless pattern as well. My corners are kind of curling up, but I can block those out. Yeah, these corners are kind of curling too. Actually, quite quite a bit, <laughs> but I'm not worried. It's all it's all um, mainly sock yarn, so it will block out. I'm not too worried about that. I think I probably would, whenever it's finished, which will be years from now, <laughs> I can probably just pin it out and steam block it or something like that. So I would be a little bit worried about wet blocking it just because of all of the colors. They would probably there would probably be some bleeding of the colors in this if I just wet blocked it, but I think steaming it would probably be okay. Anyway, this is such an enjoyable pattern to work on. And I really, really love the crazy, I mean, each little bit of yarn is such a tiny amount that the colors just shift and change so often. I am using a Russian join method to join the different scraps of yarn together. And that's working really well. So it's just such a fun project. Oh, there's a progress keeper marking where I was last time I showed it. And I've only, you know, with that 18 gram ball, I was only able to add about three rows to this project. So it is very slowly growing, but such a fun pattern to work on. So those are all of my works in progress that I have going on right now. And so my last um, finished object is a Christmas gift for my mom. So mom, if you are watching, would you please shut this off right now so that you don't spoil your Christmas present. So I was able to finish this pair of socks for my mom for Christmas and I love how they turned out. I think they're so much fun and I'm really hopeful that she will enjoy them as well. This is the Campfire Socks pattern by Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And last time I recorded, I was knitting these two at a time, but I had really just started them. And here is a progress keeper marking where I was last time I recorded. So I just gotten, I just done one repeat of the pattern. This progress keeper is actually from a necklace that my mom gifted to me that I just changed into a progress keeper because I use progress keepers a lot more often than I use necklaces. And it can easily be put back on a chain if I wanted to wear it as a necklace. So anyway, that way I just get to enjoy it more. I absolutely love this pattern. It has this beautiful cabled detail along the front of the sock. It started from the cuff and had this beautiful twisted ribbing. I used my own hand dyed yarn for the cuffs and heels. So this is on a fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn base. And this was my color Scarlet and Fine Gold. The main color, I used a beautiful yarn from Sweet Mountain Yarn by um, Carista. And she gifted this skein of yarn to me. It is in the Summer Snow Cone colorway. And it's on the same base as 7525 blend fingering weight. And I absolutely love how those colors knitted up and how they coordinated with the heels, toes, and cuffs colors. As you can see, I alternated the colors of the heels and toes and cuffs just for fun. The colors I chose um, because my mom is an Iowa State Cyclones fan, and so these are the, the red and gold are the Iowa State colors. So I thought she would really enjoy these colors in socks. I thought they would be really fun, and I hope she'll really like the mismatched toes and heels and cuffs. I think that's kind of a fun detail. <laughs> 
I did the medium size, which is 64 stitches I cast on. I knit them on US1 2.25 millimeter needles. I did do one less repeat in the leg just because I don't think my mom usually wears very tall socks. So I thought this was a good length for her. It has a slip stitch heel flap, which is a wonderful fit for most people. So, and I have made my mom one other pair of socks. So I'm confident that that will be a good fit for her. And it has a rounded toe. So other than just taking out one repeat of the leg pattern, I completely followed the pattern. So 20 rows in the cuff also, I didn't mention that, but there are 20 rows in the cuff. So yeah, I absolutely love how these turned out and they will be going into storage until Christmas. So that's exciting to have another Christmas present done. So I think that is everything I have to share with you all today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would appreciate that so much. Thanks again for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.